Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Well, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. I am not sure what I'm doing tonight, actually. Uh, I'm doing a live hangout, and I posted a link on the Google Plus page uh, so that people can join. I, I hope that it works the way it did in the past. This is the first time I've attempted to do this since uh, uh, it was changed from Google uh, Hangouts to the YouTube Hangouts. So I posted the link. If anybody's interested in joining the conversation, uh, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to see if I can access the, um, the chat and we'll see if anybody joins the live uh, uh, like the panel for our discussion. Uh, this is a Q&A. So I'm asking anybody to uh, ask me any questions that you like about theology, about what I'm doing here on YouTube, uh, or what uh, uh, the, the video that I posted regarding the subject of the uh, the conversation tonight. Actually, I'm willing to discuss any subject, but I did share a video titled um, uh, Homosexuality. So uh, I will talk about that, but uh, if it turns out that we change the subject, that's okay too. Um, let me see. Okay. All right, if anybody does join the conversation here, then speak up because I'm trying to find where the uh, the chat area is on this. As I said, I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with the new system of doing things here. So I'm going to struggle to get through this. I guess this will be kind of like a trial trial run. Um, hmm. All right, the, uh, the video that I uh, shared a few days ago that I said would be the uh, subject for the, the uh, talk today is... Uh, the um, subject of homosexuality. Now, one of the things that I've noticed in all my years of uh, Christian ministry work is that um, for some reason, the sin of homosexuality uh, is by many people elevated to much greater seriousness or much greater importance in, in fact, uh, by some people, it's elevated to uh, the point where it's a disqualifier from salvation. Um, I've, I've been talking to um, uh, street preachers over the years. I've done a lot of street preaching myself, and I know probably I've probably met and worked with a, a hundred street preachers uh, from all across America. And I've actually had some street preachers say to me, uh, Brother Luke, uh, you don't believe that a practicing homosexual can get saved to you? Or you don't think that if someone's a practicing homosexual that they are truly saved? You don't think that, do you? And of course, I have to tell them the fact is that, uh, yes, it doesn't matter if you're practicing homosexuality or you're practicing being a hateful person or if you're practicing being envious or if you're practicing uh, uh, any number of things that we all we all do as human beings we're all imperfect and we're all sinners and that we're uh, the, the the thing that the difference is the, um, the number of sins, the frequency of sin, 
and the, the type of sin. But regarding salvation, there is no um, particular sin that disqualifies someone from being saved. Now, I know that I've heard some people say that um, a practicing homosexual could have possibly be saved because uh, if they're practicing homosexuality, then they, they are um, uh, reprobate. The fact that they're practicing homosexuality proves that they are reprobate. That means that they are beyond salvation. It's impossible for them to get saved. Uh, so I, I've heard some people say that, and even some somewhat prominent uh, preachers teach that. But, but that's not true. Um, the scriptures tell us that uh, um, anybody who puts their faith in Jesus for their salvation gets saved without exception. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so there is no... Um, difference regarding uh, the the type of sin that someone does uh, that would, would say, well, that particular sin is so serious. It doesn't matter. You, you could think of any sin that you think is uh, the most serious. Some people might say, well, it's murder. Uh, some people might say, well, it's... Uh, child molestation, pedophilia. I, everybody has their opinion about what are the most serious, the most heinous, the most sickening types of sins. But um, the Bible says that uh, Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And uh, that means that the sin of all mankind uh, was uh, paid for in its entirety on the cross. Jesus paid for all sins. He paid for the homosexual sins, the child molester sins, murderers, or just people like uh, like some people who may be watching this now that are just um, jealous or envious or hateful or selfish, any number of, of uh, faults that we could identify in, in each other. Um, now the video that I shared, um, I asked everybody to if if you want to uh, join this discussion, will you please watch this video before you join, because it'll be the subject of the of the uh, uh, discussion, and that is that uh, it was a personal video, uh, and in that video, I I said that. Um, Perhaps the reason that um, I, I see this differently, for re setting aside what the scriptures say, because I've, I've already told you that the scriptures tell us that there is no sin that um, disqualifies someone from receiving the free gift of salvation. And, and uh, regarding a, a practicing a sin, well, everybody's practicing sin, even after you got saved. If you think that you've completely stopped practicing sin, practicing just means that you've continued to sin. Now, if you think it's you, you, oh, it's a sin that you're aware of and you you decide, I'm going to do it anyway. I know it's a sin. The Bible says it's a sin, but I don't accept that fact. I don't I don't recognize it as a sin. It's okay. It doesn't matter if someone denies that it's a sin or if someone uh, says, oh, it is a sin according to the Bible, but I'm going to practice it anyway. None of these attitudes change the fact that Jesus paid for all of our sins. Um, but the reason that uh, I, I, I can maybe see this more clearly than, than some other people is because of my personal experience with homosexuals. My, I, my family, as I grew up, uh, my older brother, who was 10 years older than me. So 10 years is quite a, quite a gap. Uh, I'm a, by the time he was in junior high and high school and college, you know, I was still a young, pretty young boy. And uh, 
And so it wasn't like I hung out with my brother. He was in a different, almost, I don't want to say generation, but totally different. It wasn't like having a brother that was one or two years older. But um, despite the age difference, um, um, I did love my brother very much. And, and when I was finally told, by the way, it was, I was told about his homosexuality uh, when I was a, a sophomore in high school. So I was 15 or 16 years old. And when I was told about it, when he, when he had kind of, quote, come out of the closet to me, uh, my parents were aware of it. Maybe other people in my family were aware of it. But when I finally, uh, it was made known to me, uh, nothing changed in my attitude towards my brother. It, it uh, did not uh, affect in any way uh, my love for him, my admiration for him in many ways, because um, back then and, and even today, I, I, I feel that he's one of the most gifted, talented people that I've ever encountered in my life. And it's, it's sad that uh, much of his talent was, uh, is uh, not fully recognized by the world. I think his talent is such a, to such a, a level that, uh, that um, he, he's worthy of recognition from the world. Uh, he's a, he was a very talented writer and uh, playwright, uh, poet. Uh, I do have one of his poems that I recited and posted on my YouTube channel a few years back. The title of it, the poem is Scarlet Lover. Scarlet Lover. So if you listen to that, there's no video. I just recite it with a dark screen. And, and uh, that, that will give you an idea there. But uh, the, the quantity of the, the, the work that he produced was, was enormous. And the quality of it was, to me, he's one of the most gifted people I've, as I said, that I've ever become aware of in my life. And I'm, I'm a fairly educated people, you know, a person I, I, I've, I've studied the works of Shakespeare and, I've read poetry from a lot of different people. My family have always had a love for poetry. Um, so uh, it's not like I am ignorant of the subject and I'm just so easily impressed. That's, but I, I believe he's that, that talented. And then my admiration for him, my love for him, respect for him didn't change just because now I'm told, oh, he's a homosexual. Um, but as I said in that video, uh, this was so many years ago that, uh, when the, uh, HIV and AIDS came onto the scene and began taking people's lives, um, my brother was one of the earliest to, su to suffer and, and die from that. Um. And I, I, I remember so much that after I became a Christian in December of 1986, I, of course, told my family and my friends, and I, I, I would tell anybody that uh, was interested in listening to the good news about Jesus and the free gift of salvation, I was anxious to tell people. And of course, I told my brother about it, but particularly in the last year of his life, uh, the last few months of his life, especially as he was becoming slowly emaciated, totally consumed by this disease. You know, I, uh, I had many talks with him on this subject and, and he did it at a point tell me that he believed and for me to not worry about his salvation because he did believe. And that gave me such comfort to know that uh, I will be enjoying eternity with him. Now, so, but the question is, um, if, um, if, if someone is a, a practicing homosexual, 
how do we discuss the subject of salvation and sin? Is it, should it be any different than if we're discussing salvation with somebody else who's, let's say, uh, we certainly, if we know anybody very well, if we, if someone's a stranger and we don't know much about their life, then we can just make a blanket statement and say, they're a sinner. I don't know enough details about the life to point out the specific types of sins or, or, the, or I, I'm not aware of the, let's say the frequency or the, the degree of their sinfulness in their life. But the fact is all of us are sinners. Uh, it's, it's, it's not relevant to the, the, the number of sins. If you've sinned one time, you're disqualified from eternal life in the, king, the, the new heavens and the new earth. You're disqualified from one sin. Uh, so if you've sinned one time or a hundred times or a thousand times, look at it this way. If, if someone just sins three times a day, and a, a sin, of course, is um, um, an offense against God primarily because God has in, has in mind for us the way he would like us to to live our lives and be the, the kind of thoughts we should have, the kind of a life that we should live, and 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 when we we don't do live and think the way God wants us to, designed us to, uh, then it's an offense to God, and and that's what a sin is. When we people say sin is missing the mark, you're not hitting a bullseye, you you're off target a little bit, you're not thinking. Uh, and it, see, a lot of people want to water down sin so that they, they can say that, well, they've quit sinning because if, um, if, if they believe that um, in order to be saved, you've got to change your attitude about sin, you've got to get control of your life and, 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 and uh, stop sinning. Uh, if you can't stop sinning entirely, at least make an effort and gradually you overcome it and you, you, you don't sin anymore. If, if that's what you believe, then it's a, it's a delusion. It's, it's not possible to, to, to um, put your faith in Jesus and think that you're never going to sin again. And if people believe that and they teach that, then what they've really been forced to do is they have to water down what sin is. They have to dilute it to such an extent um, there's a, a term that uh, I think fits, fits this. It, it's uh, if you sin is breaking the law of God. Well, um, if you if you think that uh, it's breaking the law of God is just specifically breaking one of the Ten Commandments, then then what you've done is you've um, diluted it and you've made it cheap law. You've cheapened it instead of understanding the seriousness. And this is what Jesus did in his ministry. Um, he, he showed everybody the impossibility of living a perfect sinless life. He said, uh, it's said that, that if you, um, uh, 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 murder someone, it's a sin. But, but I tell you, that even if you hate someone, you've already committed murder, you've murdered that person in your mind, in your heart. It's not only the action, but even the thoughts. Um, so you have the sins that we commit. These are the bad acts that we do. You have the, the, the sins that uh, we think about. If you get angry and hate someone, or if you're jealous or envious, it's... It's a sin equally as if you actually steal their property. If you desire their property and you, you, you're jealous of them, then it's a sin too. So in order to stop sinning, a person would have to not only never commit a bad act, but they never even, they could never even allow themselves a bad thought. No jealousy, no envy, no anger at any point. And then on top of that, they would have to also, every opportunity of their life to do good, they have to do, continually be doing good. If you neglect doing good, if you have an opportunity to do something for someone and you neglect to do it, like 
that person needs help crossing the street and you're too busy you don't you don't help them you have that's a, a sin of omission you've omitted this you've you failed to do something good when you had the opportunity so a person understands really the the, the what sin really encompasses it's, it's not just b bad things that we do it's it's good things that we've neglected doing and it's even thoughts that we have if you understand that then a person should be very it should be very easy for them to um, uh, recognize that if that's the case it's, it certainly is impossible for them to live a perfect sinless life whether it's the sin of homosexuality or the sin of jealousy or anger um, so Jesus in his ministry he he said that we're saved if we believe in him if we'll put our faith in him we'll be saved Jesus taught the same thing that uh, the, uh, the Apostle John taught the Apostle Peter the Apostle, Apostle Paul they all taught the same thing that you're saved by the grace of God alone only because God is gracious not because we deserve it not because of personal merit but because God is gracious we're undeserving but God is gracious and and we're saved only because of our faith in God to save us uh, we're not saved because of anything we can present to God on our on our behalf saying well here's a list of all the good things I've done God so that don't you think I deserve heaven no that's that you're going to find out if that's what you're counting on that uh, uh, you would have to be able to prove to God that you've lived a perfect sinless life from your birth to your last breath and if you understand the seriousness of that and you know, understand the futility of that you realize it's impossible so Jesus said if you're saved by believing in him having faith in him for your salvation uh, believe that that he did die for your sins and the sin issue between man and God is resolved it's 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 forgiven believe that your sins are forgiven because of what Jesus has done for you he paid for your sins and uh, he raised himself from the dead to give us a sign that proves that he is God and he is the Savior and he does have power over life and death and so when you understand all that and you put your faith entirely in Jesus uh, in an instant you're saved and it's irrevocable and irreversible the Holy Spirit of God immediately occupies your body. You're possessed by a spirit, but it's not being possessed by evil spirits. You're possessed by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that you were bought with a price. You're God's possession, and the Spirit of God lives inside you. And uh, the Bible says that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So it's a permanent thing. Uh, and and it, it can't change because uh, God's not going to change his mind the Bible says that uh, God will keep his promise to give you eternal life that you're going to go to heaven and that uh, it can't be changed by on your behalf either because uh, the Spirit is sealed to you until the day of redemption there's nothing you can do to get rid of the Spirit of God if you if you change your mind and so I don't want to have a relationship with God I don't want to go to heaven whatever how insane your attitude may become at some point in your life it cannot change this salvation that we receive when we put our faith in Jesus but but Jesus's ministry was was spent um, so much of it was spent on on uh, showing the impossibility of man being able to follow the law to uh, to in a way that they can go before God and claim perfection so that's why uh, after the the rich young man the encounter with the rich young man and then the apostle the apostles asked Jesus well based on what you're telling us Lord uh, how, how then is it possible for anyone to be saved and Jesus said uh-huh you got it now he says with man it is impossible but with God all things are possible so Jesus wanted to understand the impossibility of man earning salvation through his good works and through his perfect life 
It was impossible. And then we'd understand that, oh, God, I need you. So we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, but the faith must be in Christ alone. It can't be in some broad idea of what of God. It can't be in uh, some other God or, or a fan, fantasy God like, you know, Allah. Or you can't be saved in, in, uh, by Moses, believing in Moses and, and, uh, and uh, Judaism practicing Judaism it can't be you can't be saved by believing in uh in what the Quran teaches and that the, the religion of Islam you can't be saved by Muhammad or you can't be saved by Buddha it the faith your faith must be in the savior and the bible says only god is the savior and it says jesus is the savior jesus is the savior god so when you put your faith entirely in Jesus for your salvation, this is when it happens in an instant, and it's irrevocable, irreversible. Uh, and now that applies to every person, no matter what your particular sins are. That's why, in my case, I've had success. Uh, I'm going to copy this link here. Control. I'll post it again. I don't know if I posted it correctly. Control. I don't know if I posted it correctly the first time. I'm going to try it again, just just in case. Let me see. I'll post it up on Google Plus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think. Let me put this just in the uh, announcements here. What's new with you? I'll post it right there. I think to. Okay. Okay. So here I'll post it again. Okay, um, so I've had a lot of encounters with homosexuals in my my ministry, my ministry of evangelism, and uh, I, I've had some success where a homosexual come to have faith in Jesus and receive the free gift of salvation, and I believe that. Um, their mind and heart was opened to Jesus uh, be, be because of uh, my uh, the way that I was explained to them salvation. That uh, it's, the burden is not on us to change our lives and and uh, um, perfect ourselves and so that we're acceptable to God. Uh, that's impossible. That's why. Uh, it was necessary for God to become a man, Jesus Christ, and so he could die for our sins because we we couldn't resolve the sin problem on our own. So I found that when homosexuals that I've talked to um, understand this, first of all, they're shocked. Not just homosexuals, but, but anybody. Anybody I've talked to, if they, most of the time, they were not aware that salvation is a free gift and rather than an earned reward for your good life. Most people think that you go to heaven as a reward for living a good life, being a good person. When they when they understand it, the Bible says, no, it's not an earned reward for a good life. It's a free gift from Jesus in spite of your sin. So when the homosexual or anybody understands that their first reaction is they're surprised, they're amazed. Matter of fact, you pretty much have to prove it to them because they can't believe that that's true. So I have to show them scriptures, pull up the Bible, show them where it says that. And um, for example, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of the works lest any man should boast. The Bible also says that uh, um, we, uh, to the man 
who worketh not, but believeth on the one who justifieth the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So if a person does not do any religious works in their life, they don't repent of their sins and change their life and jo join a religion and practice their religion religiously, and, and uh, they don't do any of these things but they simply believe in the one who justifies the ungodly. That's Jesus Christ. They believe in him for their salvation. They receive it on the, those grounds, those grounds alone. Uh, but when a person hears that, they're quite either surprised or even shocked. And, and then when they believe it, they're overjoyed, happy to know that uh, the, uh, they're not under some kind of religious bondage where they are now uh, hope have to just work as hard as they can in their lives to uh, to be religious and hope that it's enough to keep their fingers crossing. God, I hope I've done enough. So let, will you let me into heaven? When they understand that um, that's not how it works, they're happy, they're relieved. Well, um, I guess that's, uh, uh, I'm, this video will be uploaded, but I'm, I'm disappointed that I don't know if I'm just not doing this correctly or if nobody's interested in, in uh, joining the conversation uh, or if, uh, and I don't know how to access the chat. Let me, let me see if I can see it on the video itself on my YouTube channel and see how that looks. Let's see videos let's see if it's showing one going live no hmm let me see if i can uh, hmm okay Okay, let me try to access it this way here. Prayer Studio. If anybody's watching this and you you know how to uh, do what I'm trying to do, which is uh, access the chat room, so that if you if, if you do have any questions or, or any comments on what I'm saying that I can interact with you. If you can tell me how to do that, let me know. Otherwise, this will just be another video uploaded, uh, but not a real Q&A interactive type of uh, video. Okay. Still trying. Bear with me, please. Okay. I'm going to all the different places to. Uh, oh, here's one live streaming. Maybe that will. Maybe that will show me. Oh, okay. Streaming now. Okay. All right, I think it's working. It's just the reason I'm not uh, accessing any chat is that no one's there uh, making any comments, posing any questions. Okay, well, let me just uh, finish this up then with these final thoughts here. Um, if, if you are a homosexual and you're listening to this message now, um, if you've listened carefully, now you should understand that salvation, which is, um, you're saved from suffering at the judgment of God being found lacking and, and then being uh, what the Bible calls um, the, the second death, 
where you you're uh, you're not going to have eternal life you will not be spending a, a eternity in the new heavens and new earth and enjoying all those wonderful things that i look forward to um, you you're not going to have these things um, unless you have put your faith in, in Jesus Christ. But if you do put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're promised these things. And it's uh, uh, it's assured to you. That's the, the theological term that we like to use is the blessed assurance, the happy assurance. We're happy because we are assured, we're guaranteed we're going to go to heaven, not because of uh, the, any good thing I've done, but because of who Jesus is. He's my savior. Uh, not because of who I am, a good person deserving of heaven, no, but because of what Jesus has done for me. He died for my sins and he offered me eternal life as a free gift. So this, this offer is extended to everybody without exception. So if, if you are a homosexual or for that matter, anybody that's realizes that you're a sinner in need of a savior, then uh, you can just simply put your faith in Jesus now. And it's it's that simple. It's that uh, that easy. All right. So uh, thank you for watching. And if you do put your faith in Jesus, please make a comment and let me let me know about it. I'd be I'd be thrilled to know that this message uh, was uh, what helped you understand about the free gift of salvation and that you believed it and you accepted it. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.